On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back with my cheap $1,000 Jag XJ8. And in yesterday's video, we replaced the fuel pump. We finally got the fuel system working and it still won't run. So today, I'm trying all y'all's suggestions. What is going on guys? I am Watch Ergo, and like I said, this is my 1999 Jag XJ8 that I bought for just $1,000 after it was abandoned for 16 years at a car dealership. Now, based on the fuel tank, obviously that 16 year uh, period is very, very accurate. It took a lot of cleaning and a lot of work to get the thing all uh, ready to go and that new fuel pump in, all the rusted stuff apart. And there was just, uh, logistically, I had to do it the way that I did it because so much stuff is rusted and stuck in place. We actually still haven't gotten the fuel filter out, even though I bought some tools for it so we can keep trying. I bought some uh, flare crow's foot wrenches so I can try to break that loose. I've been soaking both sides with our CRC knocker loose over and over, just working on it and working on it and hoping it will break loose. I even know the flares will turn on the line, but they will not come out of the old filter. So hopefully one of these days, we're gonna get that out of there. I mean, well, hopefully today, but honestly, I think that's fine because we're getting good flow and we are getting pressure at the fuel rails. So we know that that will work, even though I wanna change it. So the fuel filter is not what we're concentrating on today. What we're concentrating on today is the internet's fix for the Nicosil engines. Obviously this is one of the ones with the Nicosil uh, coated cylinders. So. Everybody says to take everything apart, pull the uh, coil covers off, pull the coils, pull the plugs, and put a spoonful of oil in every single cylinder, because obviously the cylinders do get washed down and these engines apparently kind of lose mechanical compression because there's nothing there to seal the rings to the cylinder walls. So we're gonna try the old oil trick today. And a lot of the Jag techs said that this thing will not run without all the intake tubing on. Now any other modern engine would, so that's a pretty upsetting thing to hear. So you're on a road trip and your math breaks. Rare, I know, a very rare use case. But if it does, you should not need to stop and buy a math and replace it. You should be able to get home. But unfortunately on this Jag, without a math, I'm hearing that they don't run. Now I would assume it would go to a static mix or run an open loop because it shouldn't matter that much. Uh, but if it doesn't, it doesn't. So that's really all there is to it. I'm just gonna put it all back together after we get oil into the cylinders and uh, just kind of see where that goes. I do wanna go over the process real fast. This is the JAG with the Nicosil cylinder liners uh, process for repairing no star conditions caused by cylinder washing. So uh, they want you to check the codes, check the inertia switch. Obviously this hasn't been in an accident. We do know it fires and tries to run every single time. Uh, check fuel, check fuel pressure, check for spark. We've got all those. Fuel air spark, we're there, you know. Any normal troubleshooting tells me this thing should run with no problem. Check throttle body plugs for proper contact. It seems like it's fine. The electric motor runs fine. Throttle blade opens. I don't see how there could be anything wrong there. Check the park and neutral switch. It's in, it's in park for sure. Uh, check that the battery's charged. And is your engine a Nicosil block? And the range on those is uh, 1997 to 2000. Those are the Nicosil coated cylinder liners. So here's what they want you to do. I'm gonna go through the checklist real quick. Have a fully charged battery. We do, this thing was on the charger, it's at 100%. Remove all the spark plugs and put a spoon of oil, engine oil, in every single cylinder and reinstall the plugs. Press the accelerator to the floor and hold it. That of course is flood clear on most cars. So all the way to the floor and we'll just hold the gas pedal down. That should cause it to uh, turn over and not dump any more fuel into the cylinders and try to start the car in about 15 to 20 second bursts, keeping the accelerator on the floor twice. And that should let oil work around the rings and into the cylinder. And the final step, let up on the accelerator halfway and begin starting in 15 to 20 second bursts again. And it should rip to life. So I am hoping this works. Obviously we're gonna clear the codes again and uh, that's pretty much all there is to this. We've checked out most of these things and we're in a good state to do the testing. I'll be surprised if this works, honestly, uh, because I did crank it before we had any fuel uh, quite a few times, so we should have a lot of oil uh, from the oil pump. But putting some oil on top of the cylinders and letting it work its way through the engine is definitely not gonna hurt anything. So I'm happy to do that too. Honestly, I'm happy to do anything that gets this thing started at this point because we've put in a ton of work and we gotta be close. So with that said, I need to grab an eight millimeter start pulling these covers off the coils 
and uh, start taking out foils and stuff. I really can't tell you how much I appreciate this built-in tool holder the Jag has. It holds all your screws, you got positive retention because it's all deep. And pull out these sevens, holding on the coil covers. Well, as soon as I got the coils out, we found some problems. They were all a bit wet. You can see that it probably needs uh, valve covers. If you look at the oil and everything on the coils there, and then you start to look down in the cylinders and you see that is a lot of oil. And that one has oil all the way over the uh, tip of the spark plug. And this one is even worse. This one's just completely full. And it is all oil, but also moisture. That's all sitting in there. So you know the coils were having an absolute nightmare of a time firing. It's funny because it, it runs better than some engines that I've pulled out that have been completely flooded uh, in the spark plug wells and they can barely run at all. But this thing was actually firing on all cylinders. So uh, time to pull the plugs and then we'll crank it once we get all this junk down into the cylinder and uh, hopefully we can get it all shoved out the exhaust. The bonus of the, my leaky spark plug wells is it's full of oil. So all I have to do is pull the spark plugs and they self fill. So I'm going to do that right now. We'll have a bunch of oil down in the cylinders. I'll even put some fresh oil in there because that oil did look nasty. And we'll crank this thing over and see where we get. Do we have oil on this side? We sure do. And again, more oil. That one's dry. This one's dry. This one's dry. This one has quite a bit of oil in it. And this one's dry on the driver's side. So let's pull these plugs too and start throwing in one spoonful of oil. Well, I only have bad news for you guys. The spark plugs have been out of here because they are absolutely loose. So, somebody did put them back in and sort of tighten them, but they're pretty loose. Let me grab a magnet so I can get these out of here. First plug, oh, these plugs look horrible. And not really the combustion area, which looks okay, but the outside of them, they are NGKs. But wow, these things are beat. This is the first time I've seen spark plugs rusting out inside the plug wells. They still fire, but they've had a bad life. This is what came out of the driver rear cylinder. How nasty is that? I mean, these things clean right up. They look brand new, but the deposits on them are absolutely crazy. So all of that buildup and garbage in the cylinder, I mean, in the spark plug well. Well, we know it needs valve cover gaskets. That's a problem for uh, future me. Today's problem is make the car run because I need my garage back. Four more nasty plugs removed. And now we're gonna crank this thing over to try to get all this junk out of the cylinders. Fresh oil goes in the cylinders. Obviously we don't wanna hydro lock the thing. So just a spoonful like they asked for. Ooh, oh well, of course these are wet. I just dumped all that liquid in there. There's nothing else I could do. There was no real way to suck that out of there. You need a basically an air powered vacuum or a vacuum you don't care about. And I don't have either of those here, so. We are working with what we got. And that plug's ready to go back in. Line these all back up as I clean them. And let's dump some oil in this car. Okay, here we go. The accelerator pedal all the way down 100% throttle and it's time to crank this thing over. I'm gonna step out of the way just in case we still blow uh, oil and water everywhere. Go for it. I've never felt more ridiculous in my life trying to spoon feed an engine oil. Here we go. I just grabbed some random oil out of the cabinet. <laughs> Luckily, the way they designed these valve covers, anything you spill does go in. It's like they were thinking of this from the factory. I bet they'll have to run the spoon feeding procedure. You'll need Jaguar special tool X801-239, so you can spoon feed. Whoop, uh, too much spooning. I was being really careful with this, but now I'm just gonna put the plugs back in and wipe everything off and try to make it all. Nice again, cool. Spark plugs are going back in. We're done with our spoon. We have our spoonful of oil in there. We're cranking it again at 100% throttle to make sure no more fuel enters the cylinders. And uh, we're obviously gonna do the, exactly what they said, 20 seconds of cranking twice. So we also open the garage so we can blow all this uh, oil and fuel out the exhaust, hopefully. And then we'll be ready to put our coils back in. Go for it, 20 seconds.
Go again. Did that engine start sounding better as it ran more? It was definitely running on all cylinders before, but it sounds like it started cranking better. Let's put it all back together, it's time. As you can see, the engine is all back together. Our coils are in, our spark plugs are cleaned up back in. And as you saw, we did the uh, cranking, two cycles, 20 seconds long to try to get oil to sit in the rings and the cylinders to kind of get some compression back. Uh, I also used electrical tape to temporarily put everything together, including blocking off where the resonator tube is supposed to be. That's a sound resonator tube over there, the open hole, and of course the uh, PCB as well. And I also put some electrical tape over, uh, there's no clamp where the math is, it's just missing. So electrical tape is holding that as well. It's sealed up. So all we have to do now is hope it starts. And I sure hope it starts. Also the math's hooked back up, which is the one thing everybody was um, telling me the engine will not run without the math on this car. So of course it's plugged back in. Uh, clear the codes any second now. Don't ask me how, but every code that we had before, including all those camshaft position sensor codes and everything like that, even though we can tell it's in time, um, every code was reset. So I cleared them all again, and we're back to having the two that we were left with last time, the engine oil temperature sensor and OBD systems readiness not complete. Um, so that is where we're leaving that. We're gonna go ahead and exit this and try to fire it up. 50% throttle, here we go. The same thing again? Come on. It rips to life and then quits. Well, after all that, I've cranked it many times and it started and it seems like it runs really well and then it dies, of course, and we still only have the same two codes, camshaft position sensor one, which we should be able to run with crank position and engine oil temperature sensor circuit low input. So that one doesn't matter at all. That one sort of matters, but uh, for the most part, this thing should be running. Okay, I found out what that random connector was on the other side of the throttle body there. Uh, that goes to nowhere, it's the camshaft position sensor plug. And there is no camshaft position sensor anywhere to be found on this side of the engine. It should be right here underneath the uh, fuel rail and it does not exist. I can't find it anywhere. There it is over there. You can see the wire, I'm touching it right there. And if I unplug it, which I just did, try to start it up. <laughs> Well, there you have it. We've tried everything for today. Uh, I gotta go figure out why there is a camshaft position sensor that's just clearly missing from the engine or maybe it was never there. Maybe the four liter only has one and uh, the engine in the R has two. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this sensor. I thought we might find some luck by uh, getting it to crank without the camshaft position sensor on this side, but we had no such luck. Somebody's messed with this too because the connector was unlocked. So a lot of troubleshooting's been done. I also found out this doesn't fit one bit. Like this has to be the wrong elbow or something like that uh, because there's a huge gap all the way around it. And of course the clamps aren't there, but even if it had a clamp, uh, you can't compress this side. So it's just, it's just missing everything. Everything's gone for this car, which means it might be about time to throw in the towel on this because I am not gonna go hunting for a bunch of OEM parts. And it should have been super easy to get running, but it's uh, fighting tooth and nail. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchjr.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you next time. I just looked at all the diagrams for the AJ26 engine. I think that's the one that's in this car. And it only shows the camshaft position sensor on the left bank. So obviously this might actually be correct. I think that second plug may just be for the XJR, but uh, it seems like it's actually not used on this car. What I did find out is everyone says when they see that camshaft position sensor code, it's the timing chains. And I know you guys all said in the very first comments, watch out for the chains. The chains are probably one of the most common issues on this engine, unfortunately. 
So it's probably uh, taken out the guides and the tensioner and I'd say it's at least a few degrees. It's not really mechanically out of time, I don't think. It could have jumped, but I don't think it has because it clearly seems like it runs pretty well when it fires. But it's probably the chain tensioners. And uh, that does not seem like a job that's worth doing on this car, that's for sure. It's, uh, it's not gonna sell for much after it's all done. This car has to get out of the garage tomorrow. Um, first, I think it's served its purpose. We've tried about everything there was, and uh, it's so close, but just all these little factory things need replaced to get it right. And the Porsche has to get in the garage, which means this thing it being a giant bunch of dead weight, it's gotta leave. And the craziest car I've ever bought in my life shows up tomorrow, and I'm very excited about that one a car that's truly worth saving. This car is sort of worth saving. The more things I find wrong with it, needs a valve cover, gaskets, just more and more and more things. But I got close, basically brought it back to life. 